Brownfield? Brownfields, what do I think of? Uh, um, uh. Honestly, zero comes to my mind. I've never heard the term, but I just envision a dying grass field. Brownfield, well, uh, hmm. Some kind of astroturf that maybe isn't green. It sounds like a last name, like, my name's like Jason Brownfield. I really don't know. A brownfield is a site that had some sort of historical operation on it. A bit of a lost opportunity. Issues are of contamination or potential contamination. The definition that I like best is um, uh, real estate with an environmental personality. The more formal definition is around um, derelict or idle land that may or may not be contaminated. It could be a service station site that's had underground storage tanks that leak. It could be a manufacturing facility that's had all sorts of uh, different activities. Um, it could be heavy industry. It may not have many issues at all. It may be just a very nice commercial piece of land. A brownfield is a site with, uh, with some environmental concerns, but is in an area that's deemed to be a redevelopment area. They go and they take out the tanks, they take down the facility, um, they take down the structures, um, and you're left with an empty lot. You have to like decontaminate it somehow. The soil needs to be tested, the groundwater needs to be tested. They'll do some investigation, which is typically what we're involved in. Once you know whether the site's contaminated or not, uh, if it is, you develop a cleanup plan or a remediation plan for that. There we go. This is the task at hand. Where a brownfield has a lot of potential, a lot of value, is if you can evaluate the remediation problems in the context of the redevelopment. So sometimes a site needs soil to be removed from the site. Do you, do you wash all of the soil? Is that, is that what you do? I think you'd probably have to dig up all the soil and replace it with new soil. If you can make the development uh, need to remove the same soil through underground parking or elevator shafts or utility structures that come onto the site. If you can combine those environmental problems with a redevelopment strategy, then you can realize some cost savings. Once the cleanup's been carried out, there's a step uh, known as confirmation to confirm that the, the site's been cleaned up for the future use. We removed any of the potential contamination here, it was backfilled and has been tested and then we created sort of a seal between what was old and imported topsoil for, for the new gardens. The challenge that brownfields represent are, are very similar worldwide. Big chunks of, of cities uh, and communities uh, around the world that, that used to have a lot more heavy industries, people have decided that those are locations they'd like to live. So for a community or for uh, a series of communities in, in a metropolitan area, um, filling in brownfield sites and redeveloping and reclaiming them essentially can minimize urban sprawl because it can keep the concentration of population and the, and the extent of transportation networks optimized and minimized. When you're dealing in the lower mainland, uh, the brownfields have a lot of redevelopment potential. There's only so much space in you know, the greater Vancouver area. And the, the brownfield properties, too, are some of the most desirable space. The False Creek area, downtown Vancouver, along the Fraser River corridor, where there was a lot of historical manufacturing or operations. Those are the brownfield properties. And those properties also have tremendous redevelopment potential. I think the, the next sort of evolution that's being talked about a lot is the fact that these are really parts of the community. Sites which have sat abandoned or, or underutilized as a brownfield site because the economics just didn't make sense, more of those start to make sense. You know, there, there is a, there's a limit of land, there's only so much in the urban area, and more and more of what have traditionally been undeveloped brownfield sites have to be addressed and brought back into use. We're trying to engage the, the community at an early stage at sort of the grassroots. 
the part that's the most interesting is, is all the people that are involved and that sense that we're converting um, you know, a piece of property from one thing into something that's going to be you know, better, safer, more livable and part of the community. That's, that's the part that really gets me on a day-to-day -day basis pretty jazzed up. Brownfield, okay, that makes sense now. 